Pastor Kevin, come right up right now. Come on. We just want to welcome the man of God. Give him a big hand clap. Come on, can we stand and celebrate two incredible gifts that God has given us here at this great church? Come on, let's celebrate Pastor Brian and Natalie Bolt. Incredible people. They love you and they love God with all their heart. We love you. We thank you for allowing us to come back and minister to this great church. I am so pumped up and ready for what God's about to do. How many of you came expecting tonight? Amen. Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Come on, everybody. I've had the privilege recently to spend a lot of time with your pastor, and I love him so much. I love him. He's a very, very dear friend of mine, and we've done a lot of great things together in the short time that we know each other, and I love Pastor Natalie. We love you so much. And we're not just saying words. I don't say things I don't mean. Sometimes preachers come and they visit a church, they say all the right things, but I'm saying this from my heart. We love you guys so very much, and we're so appreciative that you're in our lives. Thank God for you allowing us this opportunity to be back here with you. And uh, I have somebody very special with me, my wife. Why don't you come on up here? My beautiful wife, Olga. Her first time in California. Share something. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. You know, I tuned in the last two times he was here, and I just wanted to jump into the TV. You know, and I'm so thankful that I get to be here, and I'm excited. I'm pumped, you know. Uh, Pastor Natalie was praying, and I just felt the Spirit of God, and the worship team was praising, and I felt the Spirit of God, and I heard the intercessor when I was up there praying, and the Spirit of God is in this house. This house has such an anointing, and it's because you carried it in here, and it's just growing and growing, and God's using you. And I'm telling you, I was, I was thinking during praise and worship, and, you know, right now this world has such a wicked agenda, but right now the people of God are rising up with Christ's agenda. And enough is enough. You know, they're bold, and they're trying to intimidate people and keep people in fear and in bondage, but we've been given all power and all authority, and I've declared to kick the devil and his demons in the teeth. So how many of you are ready to kick the devil in the teeth? So this week, I encourage you to bring your family, to bring your friends, to bring your haters, and let them know what Jesus is all about. Amen? So I thank you. I love you, pastors. Thank you so much. I'm thankful for my son being here. You call him K-Money. So, and then I have my adopted daughter Liz here. Give her a hand. I have Kim and Andrew here and their son AJ. And, you know, he's here to minister and he's going to deposit much, but we receive too. And I'm just excited to receive what this house has because we're going to bring the fire back to New York because I've been hashtagging West Coast meets East Coast. So that means that revival is going to go from the West all the way to the East. Okay? Hey! Y en español, en este día, en este momento, Jesús vive, alaba al Señor, porque avivamiento viene. Amen? She's preaching. Thank you. How many of you came expecting something fresh? Come here, Shalom. Lift your hands. You're a true son of this house. And because you stayed close to the mantle and to the anointing, like Elijah would not settle for second best, and he pursued the anointing and the spirit of God that was upon his mentor. And he followed him to Bethel, Gilgal, Jordan. He followed him across Jericho. The Lord says, because you've stayed close to the power and presence of God, the anointing of God, and you've served faithfully, you've served and you've sacrificed and you've given, 
You've given your very best because your heart is connected to the leader of this house, to Pastor Brian and Pastor Donna. The Lord says, now you're qualified for a double portion. The Lord says, get ready. Tonight there is a divine deposit that is about to be released in you. The fire of God is going to fall upon you. And there's about to be an explosion in your spirit. I see things getting ready to happen. I see contracts being signed. I see labels, record labels coming to you. The Lord says, get ready. I'm about to enlarge your borders. You're about to break out on the left and break out on the right. For the Lord is about to enlarge your territory. And from this night, the Lord said, there is a double portion coming upon you now if you're gonna shout shout where are you ready for revival are you ready for a move of God tonight somebody give God a shout of praise in this place pastor Albert your husband come come with your husband join hands I see multiple properties coming into your hands I see multiple properties I see real estates and I see transactions I see contracts being signed. You have a vision concerning properties and enlarging. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to divinely connect you to people that have the real estate and those that have the assets. The Lord said, this is the season that you're going to see the dreams and the desires of your heart come to manifestation. I see right now, the Lord says, get ready. The Lord said, as far as you can see, it belongs to you. The Lord says, get ready. Everything that you've been expecting, you shall experience it in this season. I don't just see a couple of children. I see a bunch of children gathering around you. And the Lord says, it's coming to pass in this season. If you're going to shout, shout. How many of you are hungry for the fire of God? How many of you are hungry for a genuine outpouring of the supernatural? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to wait, but I'm going to prophesy it right now. I was going to wait till Sunday night, but the Lord says declare it now. The day is coming that you will leave this facility as far as gatherings of church services. This is going to be a building that is going to be dedicated and de designated for outreach and youth. This will be strictly a youth facility and an outreach facility. I see a new tabernacle being built. And the Lord says it's going to be done debt free. You better shout in this house if you're a part of this vision. You better shout in this house if you're ready to see what God has promised you materialize. You better shout if you're ready for your dream to come true, for your prophecy to manifest. Somebody give God praise. Pastor Natalie, you've already been flowing in the spirit of prayer. It's obvious I could hear you up in the office as you were praying. But the Lord says, get ready now. Come this way. The Lord says tonight there is a supernatural impartation and anointing for the prophetic. I'm talking about real prophetic. The Lord says I'm going to begin to give you dreams and I'm going to give you revelation. I'm going to give you divine insight and ability. The Lord says from this night there's going to be even an intensification of intercession. And there's going to be a powerful powerful prophetic anointing that is going to flow through you. Tonight the Lord says there is a greater fire that is being deposited in you. And the Lord said tonight there are gifts of the spirit that are going to be activated. Words of wisdom and words of knowledge. The Lord says I'm going to give you a supernatural gift of faith that you will say things and it will turn around immediately. God says get ready. I'm going to give you the word of the Lord even for the next season and level of this house. The the Lord says you're going to speak it, you're going to proclaim it, you're going to prophesy it and it's going to come to pass. The Lord says get ready. There are people you've been praying for even within your family and the Lord says get ready. I'm about to expedite what you've been praying for. The Lord said this is the hour now of acceleration. The Lord says you're going to see more accomplished through you spiritually in the next 12 months. You're going to be awakened in the middle of the night. You're going to walk the floor. You're going to walk around the house you're going to come to the church and you're going to begin to pray and the Lord is going to give you revelation strategy for the next level of this ministry receive the fire of God
Hallelujah. Hey, Shara Bahaya. Shala Bohosa Kariataya. Shanda Le Bohose Le Bohoya. Laba Shanda, the completion of your healing. Lift your hands. Fire right now. Rashere Le Bohose Andala. Eka Mamando Rebo Shimbrahaya. Come on up here. Quickly. Everybody lift your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. There is an issue with one of the valves of your heart. Times throughout the day, there's like a pain that comes and goes through your chest. True? Yes. But the Lord says from tonight, it leaves forever. God is healing the valve that is leaking within your chest. And the Lord says from this night, I am lengthening your days. There have been people in your family that have suffered with their heart. And some even died prematurely. But the Lord says that will not be your portion. Tonight I take dominion and authority over every work of the enemy that would try to place infirmity upon you. And I break its power tonight by the Holy Ghost. Everybody shout in this place. Be healed by the power of God. If you have your Bible, go with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke, chapter number three. If you have your Bible, those online, we welcome you. I'm going to ask every one of you, if you have not done so as of, the, as of yet, please share this live video. Those that are watching from my church family, those that are my partners that are watching me tonight, I want to welcome you. This is City Reach Church, and this church is in the midst of a mighty revival. And God is going to use this church to shake California. I'm going to say it again. God is going to use this church to shake California. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter number 3. I'm going to move as quickly as I can, but I really want to release this word. I've been carrying it for the last couple of days. It is not a very profound word. It is simplistic, but if you apply it, it will change your life forever. Luke, chapter number 3. Just keep playing just like that. I love it. Luke, chapter number 3. I want you to look at the verse number 16. Again, it is my privilege to be here with you. Every time that I have the opportunity to share the word of God, it is an honor to be used of God in this last day. I believe that we are on the verge of one of the greatest revivals in all of human history. Can somebody shout if you believe that? Luke chapter number three, hallelujah. Before I read this, all the way in the back. Sir, would you stand up all the way in the back? Stand, stand, stand back there. The, ge the person behind you. No, him right there. This gentleman with the hat, yes, stand. Come this way. Lift your hands. It is a miracle you're alive. One, two, five different times the Lord spared your life. You were involved with a lot of wrong people. People that almost ruined your life. There was a time in your life that it seems like you were incarcerated and there was no way out. Seems like, I'm not even talking about a natural prison, but a spiritual prison, even though it could be a natural prison. But I see you at a time in your life that it looked like all hope for you being saved was taken away. Similar to Paul the Apostle that was in a storm called Eurachlodon for 14 days. There was no sun, and it looked like all hope of being saved was taken away. But the Lord says, I have canceled the assignment of destruction and death over your life. Is everybody here with me? Are you still here? When I lay my hands upon you tonight, God says, I am breaking the cycle of destruction. I am breaking the cycle of pain. Most of your life, people used you only for what they can gain from you. And there have been people that, they, oh, I just see you as a young child. People were speaking down to you, telling you were never going to make it. You were never going to amount to anything. But tonight, God breaks every curse off of your life. Come on, Holy Ghost people. Pray in tongues till the glory comes. When I lay my hands upon you, I am breaking every generational curse. I am breaking every bloodline curse. And when I lay my hands upon 
upon you. The Lord said, the enemy that has been strategizing to destroy you since you were a young child, that curse and that assignment is canceled tonight by the power of Almighty God. When I lay my hands on you, when I count to three, I want you everybody to give God a shout. One, two, three, shout. Can I pray for you, both of you? Drinking that coffee, whatever you're drinking. Come here. Let me have a sip. I'm thirsty. Come here. Hallelujah. Is this all right if, before I preach? Is this okay? Is this all right? You know, I checked, I checked the television last night in the hotel room. Everything on is still stupid. Let, let, let's spend time in his presence. Are you guys married? Not yet. You're planning to? Take a step of faith forward. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. This is new to you. Lift your hands. This is new. The supernatural is really new to you. The Lord says he's getting ready to do a work. You have children? You do how many? How many do you have? You have one. So one together or one, one together. But this is what the Lord says. The Lord says, how long have you been coming to this church? About four years. You just started coming. So I knew you were new. I felt that by the Spirit, and I, I'm not even a member of this church. Amen. Let, let, me, let me give this little plug right now. If you're not a member of this church, you need to get connected to it tonight. There were relationships that you were in. I'm not going to get into all the details, but part of it was your fault. Part of it was, um, let's just not go there. I can go deep if we want, but, but the, Lord, the Lord, is that all right? That's not. Okay. The Lord says, tonight I am breaking you free from all the entanglements of the past. There was a relationship that you thought was going to be a long-term relationship, true? True. But the Lord says, I had another plan. And the Lord said, my hand is upon both of you. Be sure before you take the next step, if you haven't done so already, which you probably did, seek pastoral counsel, premarital counseling, which I'm sure you're already doing. Not yet. Okay, well, you, you got to make sure that you do that. The Lord says when you do your part, God will do his part. When you do the difficult, God will do the impossible. Amen? So I'm telling you tonight that God is going to do a work in you, but there's still some things in you that you have to surrender. Make sense? Yes, sir. The Lord says from this tonight, if you will both make a decision to put God first, everything in your relationship will work. Okay? There's also some things that you've been planning to do with regard to income. Uh, the Lord says streams of income. I don't know. What kind of work do you do? Production manager. You do production. Do you have your own business? Not yet. The Lord says you're going to have your own business, which is going to produce not just a stream of income, but a flood. There is a flood of income that's going to flow through both of you that will finance your pastor's vision when he goes overseas for these life-changing crusades. If you, are you ready? Can you handle what's next? Lift both your hands. There, both your hands. Both hands. Hold, keep the hands. Hold those hands. Hold hands together. You join together in agreement. Join together. Hold her hand. Hold her hand. My God, the Spirit of God's all over them. The Lord said, I am commanding my blessing. There's coming a commanded blessing. When you surrender tonight to the will of God, which is the Word of God, the Lord says you're going to begin to see dreams come true. There are some people you've been praying for. I see loved ones that are bound by addiction in your family family true yes. the Lord says tonight I am breaking them free from the addictive powers of hell and when I lay my hands upon you God is going to anoint you to lay hands on them and they shall be free now when I lay hands on both of you the Lord says I am breaking off of you all the effects all the effects of the past all the difficulties of the past. Do not drag old, hear what the Spirit of God is saying to me. Do not drag old baggage into this new relationship. The Lord says I'm getting ready to bless you with everything brand new. Is everybody in this house still hanging with me? When I lay my hands upon you, the fire of God is going to fall upon you and you will never be the same same again.
I'm not here to play. I came to preach, praise, pray, and prophesy. Lady up there in the balcony, you're scratching your shoulder. Lift your hand. Stand to your feet. The Lord is touching your stomach tonight. Lay your hands on your lower stomach right there in the balcony. Just touch your hand right here. Go like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, wonderful. Everybody turn around. Stretch your hands towards the balcony. I rebuke every cyst. I rebuke it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I command your body to be healed. There's also a miracle that's happening right now in your bloodstream. The Lord says there is a blood transfusion that is manifesting from Calvary. Right now in your blood, every impurity. I also see in your legs there's been a tingling. One of your legs falls asleep at times. And the Lord says, tonight I am improving and I am increasing the circulation in your body. The Lord says, I am touching your circulatory system. And the Lord says, tonight is your night. And the way you walked in this building is not the way you're leaving. You will never be the same after this service. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, everybody shall be healed. Receive it right there in the balcony in Jesus' name. Luke chapter number 3. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lift your hands. Say glory. glory. Say it again. Glory. Glory. Just keep saying it. Glory. 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 I'm trying to work with your faith. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You have an issue with sugar diabetes. I want you to come quickly. You have an issue with sugar diabetes. Come quickly. I know I'm right here in this center. Right here in this section. Anyone else? Right here. There's another two over here. I want you to come. Issue with sugar. Sugar issue. I want you to come quickly. Quickly. Don't wait. You got to move when the spirit's moving. The Bible says when the water's troubled, you got to get ready to get in. Amen. Something's about to happen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right there. Lift your hands right there. The Lord is not just healing you of sugar, but he's healing you of a broken heart. You have a broken heart. Tragedy struck your life not too long ago. But the Lord says, from this moment, I am healing the wounds. The oil and the, the, oil and the wine is being poured into the wound that has been wide open. The Lord says, tonight I'm healing you. I'm healing you. I'm healing you. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Fire the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. Receive that. Receive it. Receive it. Don't allow doubt into your heart. Don't allow doubt into your heart. Don't allow discouragement into your spirit. Keep it out. For the Lord says, whatever you say, you'll see. Whatever you confess will come to pass. Calling those things that be not as though they already exist. That's what you have to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, the power of God is all over you. Power of God is all over you. Not too long ago, you came to the end of yourself. And you said, Lord, I'm done fighting your will. 
I'm going to put you first. True? Amen. Yes. The Lord heard your prayer, and the Lord's about to touch your life in a very powerful way. You too are a miracle. There's a lot of miracles in this room. Lift your hands. I see a lot of hurts. I see a lot of pain even within your family. But the Lord's about to put everything back together. The Lord's about to restore what the enemies tried to destroy. Amen? Amen. Amen. When I lay my hand upon you, not only is God going to bless you and heal your entire family, but the Lord says he's getting ready to bless you financially. There is a financial breakthrough that is coming to you. I don't know if you own a home. I don't know what you own. But the Lord says there's a home coming to you. I don't know if it's being, I don't know if it's going to come through an inheritance. I really don't know. The Lord doesn't show me everything. The Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part. When I have a guest preacher at my church and they say they know everything, I never invite them back again. Because the Bible says nobody knows everything. We know in part. We prophesy in part. But I see a house coming to you. And God's about to bless you with it. There's also a healing that you need in your back. True? Yes. I don't know if, I don't know if it's two with one, two, three. Three herniated discs in your back. True? Yeah, you're right. Amen. I'm right. Amen. The Lord's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody stretch your hands. Some of you are believing God for the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation in your life. If you put a demand on the anointing that is flowing right now, you can receive it as well. As God is speaking to me and through me, God will begin to speak to you and through you as well. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I lay my hands upon your back, there it is. The fire of the living God is going through your spine, touching your vertebrae, also one of your shoulders. You have a problem and like a clicking and a pain in your shoulder. Which shoulder is it? Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command your shoulder to be healed by the power of God. I command your spine to come into a... Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus glory to God thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus you have sugar issue yes how long have you had it years taking medicine yes take needles shots no, no just years. pills mm-hmm. hallelujah Lift your hands. I'm going to believe God. You're not going to need it anymore. I'm going to believe for a miracle. This is all I know how to do. Since I was 20 years old, this is all I've ever known to do is to believe God. Someone said, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Believers are called to believe. That's what we do. When I pray for you tonight, something supernatural is going to happen in you. There's an activation of healing. And when I touch you by the power of the living God, Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we'll do more later. Amen. Luke chapter number three. I could do this all night. I feel the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God's great name. For God is great and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I want to pray for this couple right here. Can I pray for you? Can you stand? Hallelujah. My God, everybody's here drinking coffee or something. I want one. Come on over. Come on down. The price is right. Join hands. I believe I've prayed for you before. Have I prayed for you before? No. You think you believe. I don't know if I prayed for you before. You sure I did? I actually called you out and prayed for you. I knocked you down. (laughs) there's a lot of healing that's needed the 
the enemy has come to divide and try to destroy. But who God joins together, let no man divide. Lift your hands together. Father, I thank you for these gifts that you've given me. I give you all the glory. I take no credit. All the glory belongs to you tonight, oh God. I love you, Jesus. I love you with my whole heart. Father, this family has been through so much. Father, I thank you tonight that there is a restoration and a healing that is taking place. There was a time you didn't think you, you, think you guys were going to make it. How, how long have you been married? Three years. But even in a short time, you guys almost called it quits. True? True. Three years. But three is the number of resurrection. Get ready. It's coming back to life. This is your resurrection season. And the Lord says, do not give up. Don't allow the enemy to convince you to bury your dream. Because it may look like it was over on Friday for Jesus, but Sunday was coming. On Friday, the tomb was closed, but on Sunday, the stone was rolled away. God said, get ready. This is your resurrection season. I'm about to resurrect your relationship. I'm about to resurrect your loved ones. I'm about to resurrect your dreams. The Lord says tonight, every plot, ploy, plan of Satan is broken over your life and the Lord said this is your night the Lord says get ready there's going to be a series of miracles that is headed to your house Hallelujah. Somebody said, Pastor, you in a hurry? No. The Holy Ghost ain't in a rush. This is revival week. And after these series of meetings, you will never, ever, ever be the same again in Jesus' name. I don't know if I said this to you, but I see other businesses. Come here. Other businesses. You're just going to oversee them. You're not going to work for money. Money's going to work for you. You're not going to chase money. Money's going to come looking for you. When I lay my hand upon you, I'm telling you, I said this once before. I'm going to say it again. If I remember correctly, God is about to bless you with millions of dollars. But the Lord says, seek my face with all your heart and seek the counsel of your leadership. And together you will have the wisdom how to invest. All right, it's preaching time. Luke chapter number 3, verse 16 and 17. If you're ready, shout yes. yes. The Bible says in Luke's gospel, the third chapter, the 16th and 17th verse. I'm going to read from two translations. I really don't know how long I'm going to get, how long I'm going to be able to preach this tonight because I feel something stirring in my spirit. Luke chapter number 3, amen. Verse 16 and 17, John answered saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, for he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Somebody shall Holy Ghost. 
now shout fire say it again holy ghost now shout fire and it says this whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable now listen to this pastor brian in the message bible this blew my mind message bible of luke's gospel the third chapter verse 16 and 17 but john intervened message i'm baptizing you here in the river the main character in this drama to whom i'm a mere stage hand will ignite the kingdom life a fire the holy spirit within you changing you from the inside out for he is going to clean house make a clean sweep of our lives he'll place everything true in its proper place before God and everything false he'll put out with the trash to be burned my God my God he said he will empower us and he will ignite a fire to fulfill the kingdom life I want to talk to you tonight from the subject of one word and this word is going to transform your life those watching online get ready there's a miracle in route to your house tonight wherever you are the word that the Lord dropped in my spirit after praying in the hotel for hours today was this one word ignite there is a new fire about to be ignited in every life within the sound of my voice if you are hungry and desperate for a genuine move of the fire of the Holy Ghost can you give God a shout in this house tonight Let me tell you what I've learned. You can't settle for smoke once you've experienced the fire of God. There is a lot of people in the modern church that has settled for complacency and average mediocre Christian existence. I want to preach the way I feel it tonight. We need to understand in this hour of time that we are living in, in 2021, we cannot settle for the average, the order, the ordinary or the mediocre. We've got to have the fire of the Holy Ghost. How many of you you want the fire of the Holy Ghost shout yes this is what I've learned it only takes a little spark to ignite a mighty fire just a little spark can ignite a fire that in this place that will enable us and empower everyone in this room to change the world somebody shout hallelujah it only takes just a little spark to set the world on fire I love what the psalmist said he said God makes his messengers flames of fire he said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 11 stay with me everybody in this place and those that have joined online from around the world never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor be aglow and burning with the spirit serving the Lord everybody shout burning with the spirit are you burning with the spirit are you on fire for God or has your fire gone out this is not a time to be religious this is a time to do some mighty exploits and change the world for the glory of God this is an hour to lay hands on the sick and to cast out devils this is the hour to set the captives free this is the hour to break the chains of darkness can somebody shout Lord send your fire I'm a preacher I'm a gospel preacher this is all I know how to do is preach the genuine word of God we need preachers to stand up and preach the gospel again I'm praying I've been praying for months that preachers would quit and go do something else if you don't repent the time has come for the last day remnant revolutionary church to rise up in power and in demonstration and do what God has called us to do the days of playing church is over 
the days of playing mother may I with the devil is over it's time for the true church to arise never lag in zeal earnest endeavor be a glow burning with the spirit and serving the Lord the new King James Version says be fervent in endeavor be a glow burning with the spirit that Greek word for fervent is the word zeal which means to boil with heat this means that you and I have been given a divine mandate from God not a preacher not the assemblies of God headquarters we have been given a mandate from God to keep the fire of the Lord burning hot no matter what the spiritual climate is around us and in this world can somebody shout hallelujah I'm sure we can all remember the very pointed quote in the book of Revelation, chapter number 3, verse 15 and 16. He said, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you're like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Can I preach the word of God tonight? See, you need to understand, when you've got the fire of the Holy Ghost. You are immovable. You are unstoppable. You are unshakable. Can somebody shout glory in this place? God is raising up game changers, history makers, world changers, earth shakers from City Reach Church. If you are a world changer, give God a mighty shout at the top of your lungs. We need revival now. I'm not talking about revival as a little experience. I'm not talking about a little touch. I'm talking about a total transformation. I'm talking about revival is more than an emotional experience. It is the experiencing the extraordinary transforming power of God. Revival begins when there is conviction. Revival begins when there is genuine repentance. Somebody said, well, pastor, I've repented. That's wonderful. Don't go back to the sin you repented from. Somebody said, what is the process of seeing liberation in my life? Number one, understand when you repent, that's between you and God. Number two, forgiveness is instant. God forgives it, cast it to the bottom of the sea, and never forgets it and brings it up again. He never remembers it again. And then the third process is restoration. Restoration involves you committing your life, coming to church, being accountable to a pastor, that you can get rooted, you can grow you can mature you can develop and you can become everything that God has called and created you to be revival is when we experience days of heaven upon earth there can be no revival without reverence for the Word of God prayer and holiness there cannot be revival without the Word of God prayer and holy living there's a lot of preachers that I love and some of them some 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 I respect they've never even seen a revival they've never experienced a revival and they're preaching about revival every day on television and they wouldn't know a revival if it slapped them upside the head they wouldn't know the Holy Ghost if he walked down the aisle with a red hat on I've seen revivals I've been in revivals where the blind begin to see and the deaf by the hundreds begin to hear. I've been in revivals where legs grew out and fingers were created. Preachers, man, you better, if you're going to preach something, you better know what you're talking about. The Bible says God confirms his word with supernatural signs following how many of you want to be carriers of revival to a lost and dying world somebody said pastor how do I experience fresh fire by falling back in love again with Jesus 
every encounter that we ever have with God should give us a greater hunger for him. I've learned that the fire will change the course of your life. The fire of God will shift the trajectory of your life and take you places you never dreamt possible. The fire of God transformed my life. The fire of God transformed your pastor's lives. The fire of God has transformed many people in this room's life. But let me tell you something. You will never be free until you make a decision. I want less of me and I want more of him. Lord, I pray tonight that I would decrease and you could increase through me. If you want God to use you, give God a shout in this house. The fire will change the course of your life. Moses was dramatically changed by the fire of God. In fact, his life was transformed when he encountered God's fire. You remember the story that when Moses was down in Egypt, he wanted deliverance and freedom for his people. But he tried to do it in his own strength. And you remember what happened? He killed a man. Moses ran. He hid. He ran for his life. And he spent 40 years. Everybody shout 40 years. 40 years he spent in the desert. He was on. He was on his back. He would look like on the backside of the desert when the angel of the Lord came and appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of a burning bush are you here with me shout amen Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and it came to the mountain of God even to Horeb and the angel of the Lord everybody shout the angel of the Lord I believe the angel of the Lord is in this church tonight. I believe the angel of the Lord is in this place. And the angel of the Lord appeared under Moses in the flame of fire. Everybody shout flame of fire. Everybody shout Lord make me a flame of fire. Lift your hands and shout Lord make me a flame of fire. Out of the midst of a bush, he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. When Moses came into contact with the fire of God, it changed the course of his life. God equipped Moses with signs, with wonders, and with miracles. Can we say that together? Signs wonders miracles say it again signs wonders miracles how many of you are ready for it say it again signs wonders miracles can i tell you tonight if your heart is right if you're hungry for god if you're expecting a move of god in your life god will take the platform of your life and use it as a place to display his power his glory with signs and wonders and miracles give God praise God not only equipped him with signs wonders and miracles I'm moving quickly God not only made Moses a deliverer but he promoted him to be a ruler God empowered Moses to lead three million people from out of Egyptian bondage from under the whiplash of Pharaoh into deliverance it was the fire of God that transformed Moses from a shepherd on the backside of the desert to a deliverer of an entire nation. The fire of God will transform every aspect of your life if you are hungry. Anybody hungry in Whittier? Anybody hungry in City Reach Church? Are you ready for God to ignite a mighty fire on the inside of you that we will shine bright in a world that prevails with darkness in this time? fire of God that transformed Moses stay with me from a shepherd on the backside of the desert to a deliverer of an entire nation the fire of God will transform your life if God did it for me he could do it for every one of you God can lay his hand upon my life God can lay his hand upon your life when God touches your life You're no longer ordinary. You're extraordinary. 
When God touches your life by his power, you're no longer just a natural being, but there is a supernatural power that flows through you. When God lays his hands upon you, God will do through things through you that will blow the minds of multitudes. God is looking for somebody that will not take credit, but will give him glory for everything he's going to do through your life. Peter was transformed by the fire of God. You know the story. He was one of, he was one of Jesus' disciples. He was one of the inner circle. Peter was trained, mature, dependable, but yet he denied Christ three times. But when the Holy Ghost, everybody shout the Holy Ghost. Can we all shout the Holy Ghost? But when the Holy Ghost and fire came upon Peter in that upper room, it transformed Peter's life. And after that visitation, he went out into the streets and he boldly preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. On the day of Pentecost, do you know the story? When the fire of God fell and believers spoke in tongues, the Bible says there was devout Jews that were there. The Bible says that they stood up and said in Acts 2 and 12, like many may say tonight online, what does this mean? What's happening? They thought they were drunk. Peter said, they're not drunk as you suppose. Filled with the Holy Ghost. What does this mean? They heard each other speak in their language. Some mocked. Some ridiculed. Some were intrigued. But yet, the Bible says, they proclaim, what does this mean? Peter said, I'll tell you what this means. They're not drunk as you suppose. They're not drunk the way you think. But this is the promise, the mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God that you've been looking for. You just don't recognize it. Do you know how many churches that I've preached in that will never experience what we've experienced here tonight? They could, but they don't. They're not hungry. They're not thirsty. They're not expecting. They're not willing to let go of their sin. Let me tell you something about sin. If you don't get rid of your sin, your sin will get rid of you. For the wages of sin, the price is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. There's a payday for sin, and it's death. Peter said in the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit prophesying and declaring what Joel declared. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Everybody say all flesh. Aren't you glad God is colorblind? God is not a racist. If you're truly a Christian, you're not a racist. There's no such thing as being saved and a racist. Let me tell you something. The blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary was for all mankind. For whosoever will and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The last days, saith God, this is where we are now. I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. I don't care where they are tonight, they're going to prophesy. I don't care what they're bound by, they're going to prophesy. They may be sitting in a bar, they're going to prophesy. They may be bound by heroin, they're going to prophesy. They may be bound by addiction, they're going to be prophesied. They may be bound by perversion, they're going to prophesy. The devil will not have your children. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost on that right there. The devil will not have your son. The devil will not have your daughter. The devil will not have your family. The devil will not have this generation. I declare this generation is a revival generation. Why do you think the enemy is doing everything in his power 
to destroy your family because the enemy fears their potential. The enemy attacks you because you're a threat. Let me tell you, parents, I want to encourage you tonight with these words. The attack against your children is not just because of who they are now. The enemy is attacking them because he knows the power and the potential of what they're going to become. But I got good news for you and I got bad news for the devil. The enemy can attack your promise, but he can't stop your promise. The enemy can attack your word, but he can't change your word. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Say that together. My son... Our daughters shall prophesy. Your children shall prophesy. Matter of fact, you better get ready. You're about to get a phone call. You're about to get a text message that your children are going to surrender fully to God's plan and purpose before this year ends. I said before, I feel like prophesying more. I said before this year ends, you're going to get a call that I surrender to Jesus. Young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Then Peter, yeah, Peter, the failure. The one that fell short, the one that denied Christ, that Peter, that wanted nothing to do with the Lord and began to warm himself by the fire of the world, that Peter, he said, he began to preach after the Holy Ghost came upon him. He began to preach about the death, the burial, the resurrection. The Bible says 3,000 people that day were born again in his first altar call 3,000 souls were saved when the Holy Ghost fell in that upper room let me tell you what's very interesting and I preached this before but it bears repeating when the Holy Ghost fell Peter stood up when the Holy Ghost came down Peter stood up you're missing it when are the people of God going to stand up? When are the people of God stop bowing to Baal and going to stand up and declare the truth that is in Jesus Christ? This ain't a time for the church to hide in a corner. This ain't a time for the church to run in coward and defeat. It's time for the true triumphant church of Jesus Christ to do what Peter did. When the Holy Ghost came down, Peter stood up. Not only did he stand up, he lifted his voice. In other words, when the Holy Ghost comes on you, you stand up and you speak up. Tell somebody, stand up and speak up. Rod Parsley says, the church has been silent too long. And I agree with Pastor Parsley. The church has been silent too long. While the church is quiet, the sinners are preaching. While the church is hiding, the ungodly are flaunting their sin in our face. Now let me tell you something. We're about to see all these ungodly perverted laws overthrown. Stop telling me what you identify as. Somebody said, Pastor, what do you identify as? I'm identified as a Christian. I'm identified as a man that is in love with Jesus. I'm in love with a man and I'm not a queer. You want to have revival or a riot? It's up to you. Five gone will transform your life. Fire of God transformed Peter from a spiritual wimp to a powerful warrior. Let me say this to you tonight. I promise you I'll be done in five minutes. 
Don't allow anything to put your fire out. Don't let anything. Don't let religion. Don't let sexual sin. Don't let the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. Don't let anything. Don't let a backslidden spouse, a Jezebel spirit, or a Judas put out the fire of God that is on your life. I'm not selling out for nobody. Somebody said every man has a price. Yeah, the price was paid 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary when Jesus hung, bled, and died. But aren't you glad the cross couldn't hold him? Aren't you glad the grave couldn't stop him? Aren't you glad he arose triumphant and victorious over all the power of hell? You should be shouting because he paid the price for you and he shed his blood for you and he was tortured for you. Shout, I love you, Jesus. Let me finish. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 9. I hope I'm not going too long. Pastor Natalie gets mad at me when I preach too long. I'm just kidding. No joy. This is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning. Tell somebody, keep burning. Tell somebody, say, keep burning. The gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by the means of the laying on of my hands. With those of the elders, don't miss this word at your ordination. Paul said to his son, you've got to stir up the gift, the deposit, the, the impartation, the transference of the spirit that was placed and deposited in you at your ordination, at the laying on of hands. God said, I'm not going to do it for you. You got to come to church. You got to get on the altar. You got to pray. You got to read the word. You got to fast. Stir yourself again. Is your family worth it? Talk to me, church. Is your family worth it? I don't hear anybody. Is your children's future worth it? Is our nation worth it? Is our freedom and as believers worth it? For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, craven, cringing, fawning fear. But he has given us a spirit of power. Shout power. power. Somebody shout, if you got power, shout, I got power. I got power over demons. I got power over despair. I got power over death. I got power over depression. I got power over depravity. I got power over poverty. I got power over all fear. I got power over perversion. I got power over addiction. I got power over worldliness. I've got the greatest power in all the world living in me. I got the power of the Holy Ghost. Bounds mind, discipline, self control. Do not blush, Paul said to Timothy, his son. Do not be ashamed than to testify for our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but with me. Watch this with me, with me. Paul said, With me, take your share of the suffering to which the preaching, you don't hear this preached anymore. The share of suffering to which the preaching of the gospel may expose you to and do it in the power of God. For it is he who delivered us and saved us and called us with a calling in itself holy and leading to holiness and leading to holiness and leading to holiness to a life of consecration, of vocation, of holiness. Do you know how many preachers I've had to delete out of my contacts in my phone in the last five years? Just because they stand on a platform doesn't mean they have power. 
Just because they have gifts and ability does not mean they have God's approval. Just because you have a talent you could sing doesn't mean you have an anointing. See, today we want to be popular. We don't want to be powerful. But I believe there's some people here at City Reach Church, along with your incredibly powerful pastors, you don't want to just be popular. You want to be powerful. You don't want to just be gifted. You want to be anointed. For God delivered us and saved us. How many of you saved for real? How many of you delivered? Say amen. How many of you have been set free? Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I said scream hallelujah. I said rejoice that you've been delivered. Shout that you've been saved. Leading to holiness, a life of consecration. A vocation of holiness. I'm almost there. He did not because of anything of merit that we've done, but because of the further his own purpose and grace and merited favor, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, eternal ages ago. The grace of God is not a license to continue in sin. Paul said there are many in the church that have taken the grace of God and have misrepresented the, misrepresented the grace of God and have turned it into a spirit of lasciviousness. That means you could sin all day and repent every night. That's mocking the grace of God. That is not the grace of God. Before you leave tonight, I have shirts back there that says, Grace is bloody it's not greasy you're not just gonna slide into heaven you gotta repent to go to heaven you gotta surrender your will to God's plan and purpose for you to go to heaven well I don't agree it ain't your rules and it ain't my rules this is God's word tonight Somebody said, Pastor, how do I keep the fire burning very quickly? Every day you've got to feed the flame with the word of God. Jesus said, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Number two, you've got to stir the furnace and the fire with prayer. Everybody say, feed the flame with the word. Say it together. I've got to feed the flame with the word. Everybody say, I've got to stir the furnace with prayer. Let me tell you about prayer. Prayer is the oxygen to use to stoke the flames to go higher. There are three things that you need to have a blazing fire. Everybody shout fuel. Everybody say oxygen. Somebody shout heat. These are the three things in the natural that are necessary for there to be a blazing fire. If you are going to see the fire of God burn in your life and through you like never before that you may make an impact on this world that will echo on through eternity, you've got to spend time in the Word of God. You've got to spend time in prayer. You've got to spend time seeking God's will for your life. I wish somebody would shout, am I boring you? Number three, worship. To keep the fire burning. Let me, do it, let me say it again. Number one, feed the flame with the word of God. Number two, stir the furnace with prayer. Number three, worship. Worship is the prerequisite to enter the presence of God. Worship is the catalyst which miracles are performed. Number four, you got to allow the Holy Ghost to move in your life. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, do not stifle the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost to move. How many of you are glad you're in a church that allows the Holy Ghost? That's why I love coming here. That's why I love being here. Not every church allows the Holy Ghost to move. Do you know, do you realize, do you understand that they are depriving people of miracles? They are depriving people of experiencing the genuine power and glory of God when they refuse to allow the Holy Ghost to move? How dare we think as preachers that we can just give a little sermonette, a little point in a poem, and think that it's going to suffice when people are dealing with life and death issues in their lives and in their families, and we refuse to allow the Holy Ghost to move? You know, it says in the word of God, how long will you resist the Holy Ghost? Everybody lift your hands, say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Welcome, lift those hands high. Say, welcome, Holy Ghost. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Number five, check your heart. Sometimes you got to check your heart. Don't allow bitterness. Don't allow resentment to take root. Don't allow unforgiveness to take root in your life. Don't allow it to dwell in your heart. Let it go. Drop it. Let it go. Walk away from it. Sometimes you got to check your heart. Sometimes you've lost the fire because of resentment in your life. Unforgiveness. I know people that have resentment to people that are no longer living on the earth. They're still bitter. Still unforgiving. It's not worth it. It'll affect your relationship with the Holy Spirit. He said, if you do not forgive man that you can see, if you cannot let sins go and those that have hurt you and offended you, when you pray, I don't hear you. You got to let it go. It's not worth your spiritual development. Number six, if you're going to see the fire of God grow in your life, you got to associate with other on fire believers. You got to associate with on fire believers. Don't allow the enemy to isolate you. The enemy sometimes will isolate you to incarcerate you. If the enemy can isolate you, he's got you. That's why you have to stay connected and associate with people that are on fire like you. Can you say amen? How many of you received this word tonight? Give God a shout of praise in the house. God did not save you. God did not save you. God did not save me to live in seclusion. God saved us and called us into his kingdom that we could be a part of a church like this in a wonderful community of faith. Can somebody shout praise the Lord? I'm telling you tonight, I don't know what you're going through, but you've got to stir yourself. You've got to guard your fire. And number seven, if you want the fire of God to grow, you want to keep the fire burning, spread the fire. Share the gospel. Share your testimony. Tell everyone what God's done in your life. Tell somebody what Jesus has done in your life. Share your testimony. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We've got to share the gospel. We've got to spread the fire. How many of you are going to spread the fire throughout Whittier, throughout this whole entire area, throughout Orange County, through Los Angeles? How many of you are going to spread the fire? Come on, City Reach Church. God wants to raise up this church to shake this state and touch this nation. 95% of all Christians have never led one soul ninety five percent of professing Christians have never won one soul this breaks my heart thank God this church ain't like that but I know a lot of churches that are never led one soul to salvation tonight hear me start using the gifts the talents and the abilities that God has graced you with to help and bless others God didn't save you and call you to this church just to sit you've been saved to serve your pastors have incredible vision have incredible heart for people They have a heart for the hurting. They have a heart for the lost. They have a vision for this community. Those of you that are new to this church, let me say this to you as a pastor, as I am a pastor myself. When you come into this church, whether you're visiting tonight or maybe you're a member of this church, let me say this to you. When you walk into the church, the first thing you shouldn't say is, what is in the church for me? You should say, what do I have in me for the church? What gifts do I have for somebody else? How can I be a blessing to this church? How can I help my pastor? How can I undergird the vision? How can I facilitate the dream that is in his heart? I close, I promise, right here. Sin. Sin. Not a curse word. S-I-N. Sin 
will suffocate the fire of God. The true altar and the real altar is in the hearts of God's people. Say this with me. My altar is my heart. Your altar is in your heart. And that's where the fire of the Lord burns. God commands the priests in the tabernacle in Leviticus 6. And this was his commission to the priests. That the fire that is burning on the altar, it shall never go out. Say that together. The fire on the altar of my heart shall never go out. Now shout and give him glory. Same principles in the New Testament tabernacle of the church. The fire must always be burning. And it must be burning in the morning, noon, evening, and night. He says, it shall never go out. This is still the mission of the modern church. This is still our assignment as believers. This is still the mandate and the calling upon every person in this room, those watching that claim to be Christians. That's the mission of our lives. It's how we shine forth as the light in the darkness. So my question to you tonight is, how's your heart? How's your altar? Is your altar broken down? Elijah went to where God required an altar, and the altar was broken down. Everyone can see it was broken down. The first thing Elijah did was rebuild it. When he found it broken down, he rebuilt the broken down altar. Now, I want you to hear me today, modern preachers. He didn't put a new altar. He rebuilt the old altar. It's time to rebuild the altars. It's time to declare that Jesus still saves. Jesus still heals. Jesus still forgives. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. It's still time to declare in this hour, there's no other way to heaven but through Jesus. The altar is your heart. What needs to be repaired? Do you have a broken heart? Do you have a hardened heart? Do you have an unforgiving heart? Do you have a critical heart? Do you have an unbelieving heart? These are the things that can hold you back because God is the God of the heart. And this is what I've learned. If you repair the altar, God will send the fire. If you repair the altar. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is why I've come. If you let God heal your altar, your heart, the fire will fall. The fire will fall again. The way you used to be on fire, the way you used to be excited, the way you used to be in love with Jesus, you can see a restoration in your relationship. But if you say, I don't need a change, I'm okay the way I am, the fire will not fall. Elijah did not build a new altar. He repaired the broken down altar. He repaired the broken down altar. What's holding you back tonight? What's holding you back from the fire of God? From the next level? What's holding you back from becoming all that God has created and destined for you to be? What's stopping you from accomplishing your assignment? With every head bowed and every eye closed. You may come to church every week, but there's still things that may be in your heart that have been undealt with. You've not surrendered. Maybe there's an area of your life that you've not yet yielded to the Holy Ghost. Something you need to let go of. Maybe it's bitterness. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's a resentment. Maybe it's a private sin. Tonight, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I'm going to tell you tonight, as your head is bowed, as you're listening to me, a story that R.W. Shambach shared with me. He was preaching a service, and people were coming around the altar. And this man was on the side of the altar. Every, every altar call that Brother Shambach would give. Brother Shambach went out over to the man, actually it was his friend, Bert Clendenin in Texas church. Bert Clendenin went over to the man and he said, God gave me a word for you. 
As the man was crying at the altar, the man, Bert Clendenin, a great man that wrote books on restoring the message of Pentecost that many preachers I know have preached. He was the author of it. Bert Clendenin went up to the man that was crying on the side of the altar and he said, Sir, get rid of your sin before your sin gets rid of you. The following week, he said the same thing to the man at the altar. Get rid of your sin before your sin gets rid of you. The man refused and he ran. He stormed out of the church. Who does this preacher think he is talking to me like this? What nobody knew, God knew. This man, this deacon that would cry around the altar every week, that the man of God gave a strong word of warning to repent, was involved in an adulterous affair with a married woman. And one day, the man was going out of town, the the woman's husband was going out of town at a gas station, and somebody ran into the man. He said, did you know that every time you go out of town, that that deacon from that church is going to your house and sleeping with your wife? The man at the gas station, he ran home knowing that that deacon, that that preacher warned to get rid of his sin before his sin get rid of him. The The man ran home, God of shotgun, 12 gauge shotgun and he hid in one of the rooms and when that deacon that was warned to repent of his sin he went to put one leg in the in the, through the window the man blew his head off with a shotgun he refused to get rid of his sin when you breathe your last it's too late when you die it's too late I know people in my church, they shout and they praise God every week, but their heart is far from God. How's your altar? How's your heart? Is your heart broken down? Listen to me. You want the fire of God to fall? It's time to rebuild the altar of God in your heart. Every head bowed and every eye closed, this is the gospel. I don't apologize for it. You're in this room and you say, Pastor, there's sin in my life. I want to get rid of my sin. Of course, the wages of sin is death. Say, Pastor, I need to get my life right with God. I'm here every service, but I'm still not where I'm supposed to be. There are things in my life that I've not yet repented of. But the Bible says today is the day of salvation. And now is the accepted time. Well, will God forgive me? The Bible says if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all your sin and unrighteousness. But you've got to come. How do you come? How do you get saved? You've got to call whosoever shall call upon in the name of the Lord Romans 10 13 shall be saved are you ready are you ready every head bowed every eye closed I'm talking to teenagers I'm talking to I'm talking to millennials I'm talking to every person in this room I'm talking to those that are watching me from your bedroom and living room online there's sin in your life and tonight you want to get it right tonight you want to surrender to God's plan tonight you want to be restored tonight you want to begin the journey of restoration when I count to three I want you to lift your hand and your hand is a sign that you're serious you want to be free from sin you want to be free from a lukewarm experience with God you want the fire of God when I say three throw up your hand and when you lift your hand I'm going to pray for you one two three put up your hand hands all over the building all over the building if you would have died tonight where would you be in eternity if you would have died tonight if you would have breathed your last where would you be in eternity forget about what I think forget about what the preachers think worry and concern about what God thinks about you Because you're going to stand before God. Hold those hands up. You're going to stand before God by yourself. And he'll remind you of the times Pastor Brian and Pastor Natalie preached. He'll remind you of the times other guests preached. And you said, not now. There's only two choices. Accept him or reject him. It's either Christ or the devil. It's either heaven or hell. There's no in between. Hold those hands up if you want my prayer. There's sin in your life. You need to be forgiven. Hold it all the way up. Hold it all the way up. Hold it. If you're serious about Jesus, you're serious about a new beginning. You're serious about seeing God's blessings released upon you. Mothers and fathers, some of you need to surrender because every decision you make as a parent affects your child in a positive or negative way. Hold those hands up. 
all the way all across the building many of you put your hands up hold them up again now this is what i want you to do stand right now stand if you have your hand raised stand stand right now don't sit there stand 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 you said tonight i'm getting it right tonight i'm coming clean tonight i'm gonna repent tonight i'm believing for restoration tonight pastor i need deliverance i want your prayer i've tried to break free from this unclean spirit of perversion but it keeps pulling me back tonight is your night to be set free every hand that was raised stand everyone standing that had your hand raised quickly come to me I want to pray for you do not sit down please 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 don't sit down come come Pastor Brian would you look at all these people come come you're in the balcony come come on down I want to pray for you I want to pray for you come. yes 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 come Jesus loves you I love you hallelujah the only one I hate is the devil I don't hate any person. I'm not mad at anybody. I hate the devil. And I hate watching what the devil's doing to people's families. God bless you for your honesty. I love to shout. I love to dance. I love to sing. I love to preach. But the greatest thing is to see people respond to God. first night isn't this awesome on the first night the first night look at all these people Liz look at all these people the first night now let me say this to you let me say this to you please look at me for a moment I have to teach my people the same thing when you come to Christ he gives you the gift of repentance. It's a gift. Don't neglect it. Don't take it for granted. It's a very serious but yet precious gift. When you fall short, the Bible says you can confess your sin and God will forgive you. doesn't mean you have to come to an altar call every time you fall in sin. I want to be very clear. Now, some this may be a prayer of rededication, which is wonderful. For some, maybe it's a first time, serious commitment and decision that you're ready to make. But let me say this to you. As a man of God, like my father and R.W. Shambach taught me, you only get saved once. You only get saved once. Now, tonight, maybe... Say, Pastor, there's some things that I've had to let go. i got to lay it on the altar. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. Maybe it's a night of reflection. A night that you just needed to come and take a stand for God. Beautiful. Beautiful. I want to lead every one of you in the greatest prayer you'll ever pray. It is the greatest decision you will ever make in your lifetime. It's more important than a house, more important than a spouse, more serious than buying a car, career, going to college or university. Let me tell you about eternity. You could be wrong about a wife, a husband, buying a car, employment, starting a business, but you never want to be wrong about eternity. Eternity is way too long to be wrong. The decisions about this life, family, children, career, cars, money, fortune, fame, riches, that's just for this life. This decision is forever. Life is but a vapor. Tear, that's gone. It's gone. Somebody said, well, tomorrow I'll do it. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're only guaranteed the breath you're taking now. Is there anyone else that needs to come? You know that if you were to die tonight, you'd spend eternity with Jesus. If you know that for sure, that out in the audience, I'm talking to everybody out in the audience, you know there's not one sin separating you from a holy God. Lift your hand. Out there in the audience. Some can't lift your hands. There's not one sin separating you from God. Lift your hand. If you can't lift your hand, you need to come to this altar tonight. How many of you know you're saved? Lift your hands. You know you're saved out there. The balcony.
sin is not worth hell. The wages of sin is death. I want you to quickly join hands with someone. Please, thank you, I love you. Somebody said, Pastor, you preach so hard. Do you really love people? People that don't preach like this don't love people. Because when you're serious about eternity, you're preaching knowing it's a matter of life and death. This ain't no game that I play. Souls are serious business. Souls is serious business. That's why I love your pastors. They're serious about souls. I want every one of you in this room to bring somebody Saturday night, bring somebody Sunday morning, and bring somebody Sunday night. Bring your children. Shut off the video games. Bring them to church. And let them be transformed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. They'll never be the same again. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Father, say it out loud. Father, I come to you tonight in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus. You promised me if I would come to you, you would never turn me away. So tonight I come, I've made a decision that you will be the Lord and Savior of my life. You promised me if I would confess my sins, you would forgive me and cleanse me from all my sin. Right now, Lord, I repent. Cleanse me by your precious blood. In the name of Jesus. I boldly declare before heaven and before earth, Lord, according to your word, you said, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and he was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I am saved. I declare tonight before earth, before heaven, before hell, I am a child of God, forgiven, redeemed. Now I'm free. Now shout if you believe you're free. Now shout if you believe you're free. Now shout if you believe you're free. Now lift your hands all the way up. Everyone in the building, stand on your feet. Lift your hands as high as you can. Say, Lord, tonight, let your power Holy Ghost, let your fire fall fresh on me. Now everyone pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in tongues right now. Come on, lift your voice like a warrior in the balcony online. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, baptize people tonight. Baptize people. Baptize people. Baptize people in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with fire. 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 I hear my wife. I hear Pastor Natalie. I don't hear you. Pray with fire. Pray with fire. Let waves of glory, waves of glory, waves of glory, waves of glory, waves of glory. Lift your hands out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fresh oil from heaven. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 Shamrando Rebahosa. Ramande Sherebahosia. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Hoshana, fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Rebo Shimrandaha. 
Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your voice and cry out to the Lord. Lift your voice and cry out to your Father. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Touch every person with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fire. Now, pray in the Holy Ghost. Heal this broken heart. Heal this broken heart tonight. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir it up. Stir it up. Some of you need to stir it up. Some of you need to shake things off. Stir it up, shake it off. Stir it up, shake it off. Get off of me, you spirit of fear. Get off of me, you spirit of depression. Get off of me, you spirit of infirmity. Stir up the gift and shake every demon off. dealing with you. The Holy Spirit is moving on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this is your night. This is your night. All fear, all depression, all fear, all the pressure. The enemy torments you in your mind every day. But tonight, it's over. Every tormenting spirit, every diabolical scheme of Satan, I silence the sinister voice of Satan. And I speak peace to your mind. You've been tormented. You've dealt with a lifetime of abuse. And the Lord says, tonight, I am going to restore unto you the years that were stolen from you. The Lord says, get ready. The Lord says, get ready for the greatest days are not behind you, for the greatest days are yet ahead of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, just hear me for a moment. I want to make sure everyone can hear me. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Somebody here has been having a breathing issue. I want you to come quickly. Your lungs. Problems with your lungs. Quickly. From the back of the building, I want you to come. Problem with breathing. Somebody back over there? Problem with breathing. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Somebody's been having a problem with breathing in the back. Come, I want you to come quickly, your lungs. God's touching your lungs. Who is that? Who is that? God doesn't reveal it unless he heals it. Anyone? Come, quickly, quickly. 
Holy Ghost ain't wrong. I know what I'm doing. Come on. Come on. Lift your hands right there. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I rebuke this spirit that would try to choke the life out of you. I command your lungs to open. I command your respiration, your respiratory system to function 100%. I rebuke every restriction. There are times you've sat up in your bed in the middle of the night. You thought you were going to die. True? True? One time, yes. The Lord says tonight you're healed in Jesus' name. You receive it by faith. That's how it happens. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hallelujah. How you doing? Good. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Where are my worshipers tonight? Where are the worshipers? Up there in the balcony, right under that exit sign, lift your hands. All the way up there, lift your hands in the balcony. What's his name? Roberto. Lord, I thank you for healing Roberto. I thank you right now. I thank you for touching his body. I thank you for the kidney function. I command those kidneys to function perfectly. I command your prostate to be healed. Many times you wake up, wake up throughout the night. You're having problems. You understand, Caprende? Do you understand? You, you do understand. Praise the living God. When I send this word to you, the healing power of God is going into your body. Your kidneys are going to be healed and your prostate is going to be healed. You're getting a double portion tonight. Two miracles. Also, God is healing the heart muscle. The third miracle. The heart muscle. You've had some difficulty. True? True? The Lord said he's touching your heart. The arrhythmia and the pain in your heart. The fluttering in your chest. God is touching you tonight by his power. Somebody watch him right now. Get ready. Lift your hands. Get ready. Get ready. Everybody stretch your hands that way. I command you be healed. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Now let me tell you what's going to happen on Saturday night. There's about 16 people in this room. You're not filled with the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something. When you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you are powerless against the attack of the enemy. Everyone needs the Holy Ghost. Every Baptist watching, you need the Holy Ghost. Every Presbyterian, you need the Holy Ghost. Every Methodist, you need the Holy Ghost. Every Charismaniac, you need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost in this hour. Amen? Praise God. How you doing? How are you? Sir, how are you? You doing good? Yeah? Hallelujah. Praise God. Touching you. God's touching every neurological disorder. The Lord is touching every neurological disorder that is wrong in your body. Whew, glory to God. I felt the anointing go right into you. My God. Hallelujah. Say this with me, Lord, fill everyone with the Holy Ghost. Now shout if you believe the fire is going to fall all week. Shout if you believe God's going to save your family. Shout if you believe God's going to break every curse off of your house. This is what the 
the Holy Ghost just told me to tell you, if you can give it up, you can have it all. Fire the Holy Ghost. got to give it up hallelujah can I pray for you lift your hands no more fear no more fear amen come here come here babe no more fear no more tormenting nightmares We take authority over every tormenting spirit of the enemy. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Kim, come over here. Lay hands on her with my wife. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we break every demonic assignment of fear. Come on, rebuke it. Break it off of her. In the, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Tonight it's over. Tonight it's broken. Come here. Victoria, right? That's your name? You're a powerful young lady, but you've been having some struggles. True? In your mind. Is that the truth? Yes. Come over here. When I look at you, I see a mighty anointed young lady. Mightily anointed. But let me tell you something. The greater the anointing, the greater the attack. The greater the anointing, the greater the attack. You have some people around you, even people that are connected to you that you thought were on fire for God. But you found out they've been contaminated by the world. And they're trying to camouflage their sin by being involved in ministry. But the Lord told me to tell you tonight, as I've been declaring all week on social media, just because somebody's in your crowd doesn't mean they're in your corner. Those that are in your life that God has ordained to be in life are always going to push you closer and further to your calling. Push you towards your purpose. There's some people, whether you know it or not, the enemy has placed them in your life to try to distract you. But let me tell you tonight, God is going to give you clear, pinpoint, precise, discernment, and revelation. And when I lay my hand upon you tonight, every generational curse and people that were tormented and those that had mental disorders in your family, that curse stops with you tonight. Pastor Natalie, would you come up here and help me? Lay your hands on her stomach. Jesus' name, no more. No more issues. No more issues. I speak to the entire digestive system. I command every level in your body to align itself with the Holy Scripture. I command you to be healed completely. In Jesus' name, right now, by the power of the living God, receive it. Lift your hands. See this? Make sure you're saying it like I say it exactly. Somebody interpreting for me? The Lord says tonight as you lift your hands, that's your sign of surrender. And the Lord said as you surrender and as you commit yourself to this house like never before, you're going to be one of the biggest soul winners in this church. God's going to use you to touch gang members. God's going to use you to draw in the destitute, the addicted, and the afflicted. The Lord's going to use you to touch those that the world has given up on. 
people have given up on them, but I've never given up on them. And God's going to send you with a word of healing and hope to somebody that is held in the grasp of sin. I hope you got all that. I said it fast. But tonight your life is changing forever. You'll never be the same. Fire! Victoria, make sense? Did you understand? You sure? You, you got it? Good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you have any growths or tumors on your body? I want you to come up here. I know. I know what the Lord's doing. I felt it. Come. Come on up here. Come on up here. God bless you. What's your name? Paul. Paul, you got the right name. I like your hat. Fearless. Hallelujah. 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 Fearless faith. Come on over here. What's wrong with you? A CT scan found a mass in my colon, and they diagnosed me with, a, a, what's the stages? Three? of colon cancer. I had to have an ostomy bag right here. I've been speaking to a talent, calling it temporary. Well, we're going to believe tonight for healing. Amen. How many of you love Paul? How many of you love Paul tonight? How many of you believe in miracles that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? Lift your hands, stretch your hands this way. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to this cancer. I rebuke it. I curse it. I command it to die. I hate cancer. Tonight, God, I'm asking you, cancel cancer in Jesus. Somebody here, you've been having a sore spot on your breast. It comes and it goes. A sore spot on your breast. If you're not embarrassed to come, we're going to believe God for healing in your body. Who is that? In the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed with no more pain and no more symptoms in Jesus' name. You foul devil, who do you think you are attacking God's people? Let me pray for you. Stretch your hands to heaven. Lift both your hands. Hallelujah. You have family here? You skateboarded here. Could I try your skateboard? I better not. I'll need prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're in the right place. This is your family. People of this church love you. There have been people in your life that you thought you could count on and you found out that you couldn't. Family members, people that let you down, People that made you promises and left you alone. Understand? The Lord is going to begin to heal your entire life. Amen? It's good to cry. The tears of healing. Not all tears are bad. But hear me tonight. From this night forward, everything's about to change. Everything's going to turn around in your life. There's some things you've prayed about even concerning living situations and the Lord says he's going to give you the right place amen you know what I'm talking about yeah I know it's scary isn't it but this is the Holy Ghost I'm not, I'm not a fortune teller I'm a prophet of God and when I declare things they happen God's going to bless you I don't know if you're in school 
I don't know what you're doing right now. I don't know what your plans are for your future. But I see the Lord blessing you with your own business. Amen. What do you want to do? Um, work for marine life. Like, for marine life. Like, um... Marine life? Okay, so that's what you want to do. All right, well, I'm going to pray God's favor upon you. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your power that touches this young lady. Lord, I thank you from this night. She will never forget this moment when she encountered your power and presence. I pray tonight, God, that she break every chain, break every entanglement of the world. Let her have a divine encounter with your power tonight. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands again. You know, Jesus laid hands on a man that was blind twice. I've heard preachers say, Pastor Brian, if you pray again, it's a sign of unbelief. Some in the faith camp, they, don't, they preach it wrong. If Jesus laid hands on a man twice, how much more should we lay hands on people a second time? Jesus laid hands on a blind man. He said, what do you see? I see men walking around like trees. Jesus said, you didn't get it. Bam, he hit him again, and he was healed. Tonight, a second touch. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Everybody shout, I am saved. Shalom, you received that word? Double portion. You've been a true son to this house. A true son. Many people say words, but the Lord told me a couple of years ago, he said, don't listen to what people say. Watch what they do. A lot of people say a lot of things, but you follow it up with action. You're a loyal man, and God's going to bless you all the days of your life and your family. <laughs> I want you to do two things tonight. First thing I want you to do is I want you to sow a seed into this world-changing ministry. Many of you already gave an offering. Now listen, don't leave now. This is the time that we need to sow into the anointing. This is what I learned a long time ago. What were you saying? Just saying amen? Oh, she's translating. Gloria a Dios, santo. The anointing you sow into is the anointing you have access to. How many of you are blessed tonight? You know what I've learned? When you invest in what blessed you, you complete the cycle of blessing. How many of you love this church? I know you do. How many of you love Jesus? I know you do. The Bible says where your treasure is, your heart will be also. So your heart must be connected to your hand in giving. There's a great responsibility upon your pastors, a great responsibility, and we want to invest in our leadership and in the vision. Can you say amen? How many of you will do something special in this offering? Lift your hands. Now, I also want to challenge every one of you that are on staff, pastors, leaders, workers, you should be investing the most. Thank God for the opportunity as leadership to serve God's people. It's a privilege to serve and bless and lead God's people. How many of you are going to give in this offering? All the ways to give. All the ways to give should be on the screen. You know what to do. I'm going to be praying over everyone on Sunday night. Sunday night, I'm going to be laying hands. It's going to be a special miracle service on Sunday night. How many of you are excited? How many of you know somebody that needs a miracle? Let me see your hand. How many of you will bring them? You'll extend an invitation for them to come. Can I see your hand? How many of you need an offering? Do you guys give out offering envelopes for giving? How many of you need an offering envelope for your giving? How many of you text to give? Is that how you give? 
How do you give? Text to give? Online? How many of you are going to do something special tonight? Let me see your hand. If you are blessed, make an investment. I tell people all the time, R.W. Shambach, the prince of preachers, told me this. When people have been genuinely blessed by God in a service, you can't stop them from giving. I want you to give a gift of gratitude for all that the Lord has done for all of us tonight. Amen. How many of you going to do something? Give your very best. Please do it right now in the name of the Lord. I love each and every one of you. Saturday night's going to be awesome. Sunday I'll be back here morning and night. It's going to be awesome. I love you. Come on, let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Come on. Come on, let's give Pastor Kevin a big hand clap as well. All right, we'll be back here Saturday at 7 p.m. The worship team is just going to lead us in a song as we begin to just go home, go out to eat, get some tacos. Go to the taco truck down the street. Praise God. Amen. Praise make a dead man walk again. And no 